in the Big Blue Nation are a unique kind. Coming up, we'll check in on some whose love for the cats is literally growing. Crews from the U.S. Forest Service are performing controlled burns throughout the Daniel Boone National Forest. Do you want to consolidate your debt? Some ways to avoid getting ripped off in the process coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. Call it history in the making. The Wildcats are many people's favorites to go all the way for their ninth title in the NCAA tournament. That includes President Obama, and it all starts tomorrow when top ranked Kentucky faces Hampton in Louisville. WKYT's Amber Philpot is at the KFC Yum Center where the Cats just had an open practice, and Amber Rob just tweeted a picture. It looks like a huge big blue crowd. It is, Jennifer, and hey guys, you don't need me to tell you that the Big Blue Nation will do just about anything for their cats. They will go anywhere for their cats, and that is just the case here today, even if it's for just an open practice. Fans got here early. They waited hours so they could be in their seat and get a good seat to see that team practice. So today, I got to catch up with some of them and catch up with some guys that I introduced you to just a week or so ago who literally their love for the cats is still growing. They are members of a special fan base, ones who will show up just to watch practice and show up five hours in advance just to get front row seats to all the action. I'm so excited. It's, it's crazy. I mean, to see a team so good, they haven't, you know, they're going to be hanging nine banners this year. And it's a fan base that will do just about anything to support their cats. Remember the no shave till nine guys? Well, their beards are still growing. We're just excited. We've all come down here. We wanted to check out the atmosphere, see our guys practice, uh, meet some people, talk. Uh, let them know about us. Since we first met this bearded bunch, the cats have gone 34 and 0, and their movement to not shave till the cats bring home another title has grown. They even have their own official T-shirts now. Uh, it's taken off like huge. It's incredible. Like our our membership has doubled since then. They may be special and crazy, but it's a fan base that is unlike any other. That they are. All right, it is official. I am not growing a beard, but I did get the official t shirt today for No Shave Till Nine. So I am an official member of the group. But they are having a lot of fun, and all of these fans here are having a lot of fun. For many of them, it's their only chance to see their beloved cats up, up close and personal, and they're glad to just be here today. All right, speaking of the Wildcats, they're going to open play at the Yum Center in Louisville on Thursday against the Hampton Pirates, who defeated Manhattan. Manhattan 74 64 last night in a 16 seed play in game. Tip off is set for 9 40 Thursday night right here on WKYT. And we will preview Kentucky and the NCAA tournament. Join us for Big Blue Road to Indy. That is 7 o'clock tonight here on the CW Lexington. For a city that normally bleeds red, it is certainly bleeding a lot of blue here tonight. I'm looking around for other teams and their fans. I've seen some Purdue folks, and that is about it. They're expected to bring a large crowd as well. For now, that is the story here in the Derby City. Back to you. Uh, as beat. your co-anchor, I hope I speak for everyone here. We're glad you're not growing a beard. <laughs> yes. I, I bet you are. Yes. That's maybe, a good decision, Amber. Maybe Sam can do no shave till nine, yeah, though. Yeah, well, boss is not going to let that happen. All right. <laughs> Try to stay warm out there. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> well, just when we thought spring had arrived, it felt like it earlier this week, another round of cooler air is making its way into the bluegrass. I grabbed my winter coat today, so keep those handy because the cooler temperatures are sticking around for a while. Let's head over to meteorologist. Jim Caldwell, tell us about what we are facing. Hey, Jim. Hello, guys. We are tracking a chilly, chilly air in place all across the central, eastern, and southern parts of Kentucky. And for all of those fans that are likely going to be heading to Louisville, we'll break forecast down for you as well. It's not that far of a trek. And the weather pattern will be very similar between the two cities. Showers likely during the afternoon and evening tomorrow, and then rain likely during the game tomorrow night. Then as we just fast forward to Saturday, much better day. 65 degrees, partly cloudy skies. It should be a really nice day. 
Not that way this morning, though. We had all kinds of chilly conditions showing up around here. Cynthiana got down to 23 degrees this morning. Paris at 26. Out at the airport here in Lexington, we were at 26. Today, right now, we're not doing much better because we have temperatures only in the mid 40s out there. Normal daytime high. 56, and we are well off of that right now. 48 down toward Richmond, and you've got uh, more upper 40s, low 50s showing up across southern and eastern parts of Kentucky. So this chill is really here with us. There's Defender. It's been tracking a little moisture, especially in western parts of Kentucky. You can see the leading edge of these showers coming into play, and they will likely roll our way overnight and early tomorrow morning. We might even track a few flakes of snow. It's a possibility tomorrow morning. We'll take a closer look for you coming up. Thank you, Jim. Well, they say it's a way to reduce the risk of forest fires. For the next few weeks, people living near the Daniel Boone National Forest might see some fires. But U.S. Forest Service leaders say there's no reason to be concerned. Sam Smith talked to officials who tell us it's all part of an effort to keep forest fires under control. So these are, I mean, ideal burning conditions today. The Cumberland River Valley inside the Daniel Boone National Forest underwent its regularly scheduled maintenance. What it is is it's us putting fire on the ground. The idea is to improve the environment for plant and wildlife. Crews had a lot of ground to cover. Thankfully, they had some help from the sky. A helicopter was used to ignite the difficult to reach areas of the forest dropping ping pong ball sized balls with chemicals inside. When they hit the ground, uh, the chemicals interact and they start on fire and that's how we light the interior of the burn. Crews will monitor the perimeter of the forest, making sure the fire doesn't spread. Up to 4,000 acres of the forest will be burned altogether. The, what, what we like to say is this is putting fire on the ground in our terms, so instead of waiting for a fire to to be lit accidentally and us coming out and having to put it out, we can actually plan where we're going to put the fire uh, and use it as a tool as opposed to some destructive force that people think about it. In Whitley County, Sam Smith, WKYT. And parts of the Daniel Boone National Forest in McCreary County were also burned today. Two Central Kentucky men are behind bars tonight after a drug bust. Our county by county coverage begins in Franklin County. The sheriff tells us they arrested David Bollinger and Ari Jones for selling narcotics after finding cocaine and heroin. Both men are in the Franklin County Regional Jail facing several drug-related charges. In Madison County, it may look like a scene from CSI, but for students at EKU, it's their classroom. The university's forensic program now has a house to use for staging realistic crime scenes. This afternoon, school leaders set up a mock crime scene near Kit Carson Drive. The goal of the crime scene is to help students in the program master their skills and better prepare them for real life scenarios. Students learn the best from hands on, whether it's this type of a scenario or in a lab setting. Um, we can talk to them in lectures and tell them the correct way to package, but for them to have to do that themselves, it, it really sinks in and they remember. So, having this house has really given us an excellent opportunity for them and the learning environment. Eastern Kentucky University's forensic science program is one of the oldest in the nation. It's also one of 18 undergraduate programs in the U.S. accredited by the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. Firefighters in Louisville recovered a woman's body this morning after she fell into a sinkhole. The woman, who's in her 70s, was missing for several hours overnight before she was spotted in the hole in the city's Pleasure Ridge Park neighborhood. It took rescue crews several hours to reach her. She was unresponsive when they finally got to her. The woman's body was finally removed from the sinkhole early this morning. Her name has not been released. People who are trying to get out of debt can often be vulnerable to scam artists. As we found, there are simple and affordable steps you can take to pay down your debt. They look tempting. Companies promising to help consumers avoid bankruptcy by consolidating debt. They think they have found a, a solution to their financial problem. In truth, postal inspectors warn many of these websites and companies are not only expensive, but also engaged in fraud. Not even regulated. They're not even registered with the FTC. Um, they charge fees to customers um, that they shouldn't have. And sometimes they just walk away with their money. 
The Federal Trade Commission regulates the debt settlement industry. Experts say added service fees, lack of accountability, and high monthly payments are some of the pitfalls of these debt resolution companies. Consumers trying to do the right thing could find themselves in even more trouble if they don't do their research. We found out that they have spent thousands of dollars and this money hasn't gone towards negotiating anything with the companies. And oftentimes even the operators have walked away with their money. Inspectors say the most important thing anyone with debt can do is to meet face to face with someone versus doing anything online. Consumers should meet with a certified credit counselor before deciding on an action plan. Many of these are nonprofit and don't charge a fee. They may suggest bankruptcy, debt settlement, or other options. At that point, consumers will likely learn they have more control than they think. If consumers decide to go the debt settlement route, they can contact the companies directly to negotiate the terms or fees or any amount that they feel that they need to have lowered. If those negotiations do not work, a debt settlement lawyer is another option. That lawyer can be held accountable if he or she fails to legitimately assist debtors. Students in Pulaski County get a unique lesson in healthy living. Coming up, what they learned from examining a pig's heart. I'm Bill Bryant. It now looks like we know the launch date for Senator Rand Paul's expected run for the White House. Governor Bashir urges action on Kentucky's automatically falling gasoline tax. The bottom line is ahead. It's an unusual crime that started as a routine traffic stop and turned into a drug bust. Coming up at 6, where deputies found the drugs during their search.